meeting of the Preservation Board for June the 24th, 2024 is now in session. I'm going to call a roll to establish who is here and who is not. Commissioner Allen, are you here? Yes. Commissioner Hamilton, are you here? Yes. Commissioner Hamilton, are you here? Commissioner Colleen, are you here? Yes. Alderman Narayan, are you here? Yep. Commissioner Richardson, are you here? Commissioner Robinson, are you here? Okay, we have five commissioners present that constitutes a quorum. We will take a meeting. Commissioners, take a look at today's agenda. Is there anything on here that you need for the record to abstain from? Commissioner Hamaker. Uh, just item A. Okay. Anybody else? I'm out on A also. Is the applicant for A present? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Richard, um, for the Geyer project, do you want to? Yeah, so Geyer, Geyer has been settled. Yes, um, I, before I start, can somebody in the waiting room, or it was on the Zoom, can they hear us okay? Can somebody on Zoom respond, make sure you can hear us? Just like to check, can folks hear us? Can somebody respond on Zoom? Yes, it looks like in the chat. Okay, um, yes, Alan, um, Caprola is in is in the, uh, the Zoom, so he's here. Uh, he's in case you want to hear anything, but we would like to remove Geyer uh, if possible. We've come to a resolution late Friday for the correct kind of a design for the, the new door, so we'd like the item removed. It'll be resolved. Okay, we'll take it off the agenda. Okay, Alan, you hear that? You're good to go. <coughs> okay. Alan, yeah, thanks. All right, thanks, Alan. Any other changes? Everybody okay with the order? Okay, then this will be our agenda. First item, old business, approval of the May 20th, 2024 minutes. Has anybody read them? And if so, do you have a motion? I move that we approve the minutes from the last meeting. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of Adopting these as our minutes for May 20th, 2024, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Any minutes for May 20th, 2024 are approved. At your last meeting, is that right? That's correct. Is there a cake? Okay. And you, your direct report will be that there is no cake? <laughs> Among other things, yes. <laughs> Good note. Agenda item A. Jan Cameron, Sculpture Resources Office. This is a unusual project for the board to see. This is the extension to the existing amusement park called the Wheel Park at Union Station. And I'm sure you all know the Ferris wheel that's there. There's also an existing carousel but they're going to substantially increase the amusement area. So, run this correctly, because I'm not used to doing it anymore. This is the location, which is actually fronts on 20th Street. Okay. Um, and this is an existing canopy, a train canopy that is not connected, or at least it's not uh, being uh, affected by the uh, historic canopy that's behind it. And this is a site plan showing the area of development. As you can see, it's considerably south of Market Street. And an area with the same view. This is a shot from Market Street, and you can see the Ferris wheel at the far right. And the uh, development will be south of the Ferris wheel. So it will really not impact anything uh, of the historic train station building. And again, we're back at the same site. Um, this up above on the top is the existing site plan with the uh, Ferris wheel or the wheelhouse and the um, uh, carousel. And you can see the additional uh, development that's being added, which I have here. A, so I'm not really an amusement park person. <laughs> a wave swinger, which looks very frightening. A pirate ship and a spinning coaster. And here they are. So it looks like a very 
interesting development. And this would be the streetscape. And you can see the new construction in comparison with the uh, scale of the Ferris wheel. So the, the staff is recommending that the board grant approval to the uh, proposed project. Um, it would have no impact on the historic station or train shed and it would hardly be visible for Market Street. So the historic context along Market will remain intact. Any questions? The applicant present? Yes. Yes. Any questions for the applicant? I have one person in person signed up to speak, Chad Smith. That's, me. That's yeah. I'm just here to answer questions. As, as it turns out, we have none. Well, we also today. have the designer on Zoom if you have questions for the designer. Is anybody besides the designer? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Have we heard enough? Do I hear a motion? I move that we grant uh, preliminary approval of this proposed construction as it complies with the requirements of the Union Station Redevelopment Plan and Union Station Landmark District Standards. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Well, roll. Commissioner Allen, do you vote yes or no? Yes. Commissioner Colleen, do you vote yes or no? I'm saying. Should have liked that sometimes, but not much. Oh, Ryan, do you vote yes or no? Yes. Chair votes yes. There are three yeses, two abstentions. The uh oh, I don't know. When is it quiet? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's really really finicky today. So I, I have preserved my perfect record of not getting all the abstentions right mm -hmm. the first time. Just right. item B. 4147 Connecticut. Good evening, board members. Um, this is a preliminary review for a project to demolish the house at 4147 Connecticut and build two new townhouses in its place. Uh, I'll first go through just some pictures of the existing building. This is uh, 4147 Connecticut from the front. Here's the location. It is in uh, the Oak Hill National Register District and also in the Tower Grove South neighborhood. Additional views from the side. Looking from the side. Looking from the alley, and that's uh, the garage, which is also proposed for demolition. And, uh, I'll get into some context shots in a minute. But um, this is a proposal to demolished a single family house in the Oak Hill National Register District. And we therefore evaluated it according to the standards set forth and the criteria set forth in the Preservation Review District. First is the redevelopment plan. That's not applicable here. There is no redevelopment plan in the area. Architectural quality. We note that it was built in 1891. It is a vernacular frame house with a cross gable roof placed atop a masonry foundation. The front facade is marked by a steeply pitched front gable with centered double hung window. A number of non-reversible alterations have lessened the house's historic character. These include parting of the foundation, enclosure of the original full width front porch and west entry and replacement of most of the original windows and doors. Most particularly installation of vinyl siding has obscured any extant original wood trim. And as the National Register nomination for Oak Hill notes, um, 4147 has be, had been covered with a layer of asphalt siding, so the loss of any significant exterior trim can be assumed. That National Register nomination also lists the property as being a non-contributing structure. Um, condition, the building appears sound under definition in Ordinance 64689. Uh, we know that the site is located in an area with a strong real estate market. Um, there hasn't been any information submitted to counter the viability of the building for reuse, and we have no evidence of economic hardship. Um, in terms of urban design, the block is dominated by one and two story brick houses. And I'll just go to context now. This is, sorry, this is immediately to the west. So you can see 4147 in the background and a similar house in the foreground. This is looking a little bit further west down Connecticut Street. This is immediately to the east. Um, this is opposite looking east and there's the um, exuberantly eclectic house that we noted in our staff report could quite figure out how to describe that one um, this is also across the street 
and looking east and west. <clears throat> so the block is dominated by one and two story brick houses and also includes a brick fourplex, an exuberantly eclectic house and two more recently built houses. The loss of this one and a half story wood frame building and its replacement by two brick townhouses would not adversely impact the continuity and rhythm of the block. Um, proposed subsequent construction, we know that it is compliant with the terms set forth. So we believe that the proposed new construction complies in that the proposed buildings are compatible with the neighborhood context and the existing structure has been greatly altered from its original historic appearance. Um, the proposed construction would be two identical semi-detached two-story townhouses, and I'll go through a few more slides so you can get a better idea, that are similar in scale and set back to adjacent properties. The three bay front facades of dark red brick would rise to end in front facing gables. The eastern bays contain the primary entry and are sheathed in vertical paneling. Fenestration would be contemporary in detail, but compatible in placement in proportion to that of neighboring buildings. This is a very washed out slide. I apologize, it looked a lot better. Um, you can see the distance between the houses, the new, the new townhouses and the house to the right. And here's a site plan showing the location. So, um, and as I noted, there's a non-contributing garage that would also be demolished. So preliminary findings and conclusion. 4147 Connecticut is located in the Oak Hill National Register District and the Preservation Review District. The building is considered non-contributing in that it would not contribute to a possible historic district. The building is sound within the definition of the ordinance and the proposed subsequent development would be two red brick townhouses that our office has determined would be compatible with the existing resource of the Oak Hill National Register District and therefore would have no adverse effect upon the district's historic character. Based on these preliminary findings, we recommend that the Preservation Board grant preliminary approval of the demolition and new construction with the conditions that a demolition permit not be approved until after the issuance of a building permit and that final details, drawings, exterior materials, and color be reviewed and approved by cultural resources. So Meg, your assertion is that this uh, house under the terms of uh, Section 5, subsection B, non contributing not just the National Register terms, but they are terms of our board. Under the ordinance, we have to we have to determine whether something is high merit, merit qualifying or non-contributing. Contributing is, although it's a definition in the ordinance, is not listed as one of the, from which we can choose to make a determination for preservation review districts. So it was a judgment call. I didn't think we'd have any significant impact on the outcome. Thank you. Questions? And the applicant is here. Do we have questions for the applicant? Is there anybody in the waiting room? Talk about this. Commissioners, we got a motion on the agenda item B. I move that the preservation board grant preliminary approval for the demolition of a single family house and the construction of two townhouses with the conditions that de the demolition permit not be approved until after the issuance of the building permit and that final drawings, details, and exterior materials and color be reviewed by and approved by cultural resources. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, the motion is a motion before us. Seconded. Uh, roll, roll. Commissioner Allen, you vote yes or no? Yes. Commissioner Hamilton, you vote yes or no? Yes. Commissioner Colleen, you vote yes or no? Yes. Alderman Narayan, you vote yes or no? Yes. Chair of State is on this vote. There are four yeses, one abstention, and the motion carries. Okay. Oh, Commissioner Rodney. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you have a discussion? I was. Commissioner Register, vote for the record? Yes. And what is your vote? Yes. <laughs> is that a two yeses? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Board. For the record, that was five yeses at one extension. Or maybe six. Seven. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do agenda item C. Okay. Agenda item C is a preliminary review to demolish a single family house and garage to construct a single family house. Um, this is the house at 6222 Carlsbad. Avenue, which is in the Bevo Mill neighborhood. It's right across, it says Christie Park, but I thought it was Joseph R. Leisure Park. Anyway, Google Maps says Joseph R. Leisure, this map says Christie Park, but it gives you a sense of where it is, kind of the intersection of Christie and Holly Hills. Um, this is the existing house. And uh, 
Let's see. So as with the um, previous case, we used the standards set forth in the Preservation Review District to evaluate the application. There is no redevelopment plan here, so that's not applicable. Um, we note that 22, sorry, 6222 Carlsbad was constructed in 1910. It's a one-story frame house with a medium pitched front gable and concrete block foundation. It's a simplified form of the bungalow style and originally had a full width gabled porch across the front facade that has now been enclosed. The entire structure has been sheathed in vinyl shiplap siding that is obscured and likely destroyed any historic, original historic detailing. The building remains compatible in scale and massing to other bungalow inspired houses on the block. However, due to the extensive alterations that have destroyed any remnant of its historic appearance, it would not be considered to be a contributing resource to any potential historic district. And we'll just show you some of the immediate context. It's the garage in the rear. You can see uh, there are two brand new houses to the left here. And uh, I believe the applicants reside in one of them right now. Um, and they're gonna be building this house, hopefully where the bungalow is. And you can see there's some smaller bungalows to the right there. And then that's right, what's right across the street. <clears throat> so in terms of condition, the building does appear sound under the definition and ordinance 64689. Um, the site is located in an area with a strong real estate market. We don't have information to counter the viability of the house for reuse or for economic hardship. <clears throat> um, we note that the block comprises primarily small, one story and brick and frame single family houses. The exceptions are the two two story houses adjacent to 6222 on the north, constructed in 2018. Given the existing alteration, the loss of this one and a half story frame building and its replacement by a third two story house would not add substantially to the present interruption of the block's continuity and rhythm. And getting on to new construction, this is what's proposed. We believe it complies with the standards set forth. Um, the proposed building would be compatible with the two adjacent buildings. And we note again that the existing structure has been greatly altered from the original historic appearance. Um, what we have is a two-story, three-bay single family building with a medium pitched front gable roof. The street facade would be sheathed in dark red brick at the first story and composite lap siding at the second. Given the mix of brick and siding characteristics of properties on this block, this design would be visually compatible. By slightly larger than the majority of buildings in the surrounding area, the scale of the new structure would be consistent with the houses at 6216 and 6218 Carlsbad, adjacent to the north, constructed in 2018. And I'll just go through some additional images of the house. So here's what we have, Maxon. Here's some materials, elevations in the front and rear, and the side, and uh, there's a site plan. So, and again, the garage would also be demolished. So preliminary findings and conclusion, 62 Carls, 6222 Carlsbad is located in a preservation review district. It is considered to be non-contributing and it would not contribute to a possible historic district. It is sound within the definition of the ordinance and the proposed subsequent development would be a two-story single family house that the cultural resources office has determined would be compatible with the existing resources of the block. Based on these findings, our office recommends that the Preservation Board grant preliminary approval of the demolition and new construction with the conditions that a demolition permit not be approved until after the issuance of a building permit and that final drawings, details, exterior materials, and color be reviewed and approved by the Cultural Resources Office. I would also like to note that you received um, a letter of support from Alderman Ann Schweitzer, and today we got a letter from the Bebo Mill Neighborhood Association also in support, and I believe there were some letters from neighbors about setbacks and um, being supportive of whatever's needed to do the new construction. Meg, has there been any opposition expressed to this? None. Anybody else? Questions? Uh, yeah. Anybody in the waiting room, please testify. Christian, you want to speak? No, thank you. Okay. Okay, Commissioner, we have a motion on agenda item C. I move that the Preservation Board grant preliminary approval for the demolition of the single family house in 22 Carlsbad Avenue and approved construction of a single family house with the conditions that a demolition permit not be approved until after the additions of the building permit and that final drawings, details, exterior materials, and color be reviewed and approved by the staff of the Cultural Resources Office. Second. Any discussion, commissioners? Hearing none. Motion 
Here we go. This is a formal, this is a formal document. Don't go make quite a formal document. Commissioner Allen, do you vote yes or no? Yes. Commissioner Hammaker, do you vote yes or no? Yes. Commissioner Colleen, do you vote yes or no? Yes. Alderman Narayan, do you vote yes or no? Yes. 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 Commissioner Robinson, do you vote yes or no? Yes. Which chair abstains? There are five yeses, one abstention. This motion carries. Okay, commissioners, we're now moving into the appeal of directive denial moment. We'll proceed a little differently. We'll ask the people to testify to affirm or swear that they're telling the truth. And at the point of the testimony, we'll be to fill the record of appeal. This item was deferred until this month, if you recall. Um, so I need to, to reenter all my information. It was I, I introduced it, but then we you guys voted to defer it until right, this so month. It's still on the record. It's still on the record. Will, will you remind us what this is about? I will go through the whole thing. No, that's not necessary. We didn't last time. We did not. We did not. Well, the applicant is here. So <laughs> that I mean, again, I don't I mean. Well, Mr. Allen made a very uh, quick uh, motion last time. <laughs> so, um, do we need to go through the? Um, before you was an appeal of a denial. <laughs> before you was an appeal of a denial to construct a garage in the Hyde Park Historic District. Um, just really quickly, this is property in question. I'm not sure if you can see my cursor. This is the location of the proposed garage, the shed currently there in place. Quick side view. Uh, Farragut is the cross street. There's a line to Farragut because there's been heavy demolition along that stretch. And here's the property. It's a pretty intact block of glare on both sides of the street, actually. It's kind of nice. This is the view from Farragut. This is the position of the new garage. And it's, it, this is the design for the proposed garage. And this is the, the, the reason why we're here. The code does not allow for metal siding as one of the materials. Materials allowed for new construction that includes garages. There is a line of sight from both Blair and Farragut, which is the cross street, but um, you will see the garage um, as it's constructed. There's also a uh, note that you can't have metal roofing. So the garage has metal roofing, has metal siding, so it's not compliant in those two regards. Setback placement is fine. Um, so given that the proposed garage is not compliant. Staff recommends that the board uphold the director's denial. Um, I, I corresponded with the neighborhood group. They decided not to comment, it appears. I know also the applicant has corresponded with them, but we have received no formal comment from the neighborhood group. Any questions for me? Okay, let's hear from the appellant. Actually, a question. What are the appropriate materials? They are. Stucco, terracotta, wood, concrete. So. Right, yes, I see it. Thank you. About this building has not been constructed yet. Right? That is correct. Tony? Welcome. Hi. Tell us your name. Shawnee Little. And is your testimony going to be the truth? Yes. Okay, what do you want us to do? Honestly, yeah. I want you to approve my garage. Okay. Tell us why. <laughs> well, I chose the metal because it's more cost efficient. And the reason why we want to put that there is because we have a really bad crime rate there. Like they always throw in our lawnmower, our ladders, they break in our cars. They hit our cars, they bust our windows out if they see, or they think they could get something inside. That's basically it. Like we can chain our lawn equipment up. They will find a way to still, to still steal it. So we just want something that we can, it's beneficial for us. You know what I'm saying? Like to put our cars in there if we need to, to put our lawn equipment in there, those kinds of things. Okay, that's so. a good reason for a garage. What's, what's the reason for a garage that doesn't apply to the ordinance? Because the metal is more cost efficient for us. So we've done our research on the wood and whatnot. It's just, it's too much. We can't afford it. That's the reason why we chose the metal. Explain a little bit more about can't afford it. 
So this is 9,000. So if we look at wood, it was explained to us from the person that we went to, it was more like 50,000. We, we don't have that. <laughs> Honestly, I, we don't. We stayed for three years just to come up with this. So that's why. Questions for the development. Is this building more secure than a, than a wooden building would have been? Is that another concern that that all keeps it? My husband thinks so. He couldn't be here because he has to work, but yeah. You love Hyde Park? I've been in that house for 30 years. You want to stay in Hyde Park for the yeah. future? I don't want to. My kids were raised there. I was raised there. My husband grew up in that house. So we don't want to move. All of my neighbors are great. We all try to look out for each other. Some of them are in their 90s. So yeah, we don't want to move. It took me a long time to get where I am. <laughs> I don't want to have to start over with another house. It might not be much, but it's mine. I paid for it. Questions for the appellant? Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody in the waiting room? Okay. Commissioner, I already got a motion. Yes, I will repeat the motion. The main meeting, uh, I will the preservation board overturn the director's denial to construct the two car garage on the metal side. Second. Is there any discussion? Oh. Um, Yes. Okay, Bob Bevis with staff, I swear to tell the truth. You'd enter in ordinances 69423, which is the Central West End Ordinance. 64689, our enabling ordinance as amended by 64925, my presentation and my staff report. The yeah, really is washed out today. I'm washed out today. I'm sorry about this picture. It's hard to see everything. Uh, this is uh, property in Central West End. It's an appeal of a denial to retain a retaining wall built without a permit. And this is the property in question in its current condition. This is the location just south of Olive and to the west of Walton. Uh, this is the, uh, the current streetscape looking to the west, the wall in question is on the right, kind of gives you a sense of the wall. That's a, um, it's, uh, they've, they've cut the wall, I'm trying to cut the hillside back a few feet, and the wall itself is built of um, non historic materials. It's a cast concrete unit. This is the previous streetscape before the retaining wall went in, so you can see the before and the after. Um, there are a few, um, older walls on the street that I looked up, they either predate the ordinance or were done several years ago for ones that I cannot um, pursue any kind of um, violation. Coverage. And here's some more streetscape shots. 
here's some more context to the West. Uh, there's a wall down the block that was built. It looked like at least sometime in 2015, if I can tell. And this is the current condition again. Here's a shot. Uh, this is, this um, started way back in November of 23. Got a complaint, reached out to the owners. They did contact me right away. Um, they're having a dispute with their, um, their contractor on this. But it's not complaint two ways. It's a cast concrete unit and they've modified the original slope of the front yard. So it's not compliant in those two ways with the standards. Um, you received a letter uh, from Jim Dwyer and the neighborhood group. They are not, they're, they're in support of staff's denial. Um, so any questions I may answer, uh, we recommend that you uphold the director's denial as, those, as the wall is not compliant, those two points. Questions, Bob? There's no way to make it compliant. No. Totally. In your opinion? Well, no, because one point is the, the hillside being yeah. cut back. So right. one thing you can do that there, I mean, that right away negates that. Even if you put up a, a natural stone wall, the one item is not compliant. Thank you. So. Any questions? Okay, sir, are you power? Welcome, thank you for your patience. Hi, everyone. My name is Rebecca McLaughlin. This is my husband, Andrew McLaughlin. Oh, sorry. Do you swear to tell the truth? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Proceed. What would you want us to do? So we would like you to allow us to keep the wall. Um, we, when we moved in a couple of years ago, we had a bunch of dead plant matter in the front of our yard. We had missing stone. I know it's hard to tell, but missing stone in the front. So we contracted with a landscaping company who did work in our area. Um, when we met with them, they represented to us that they had done work on our street um, and pitched us on the idea of doing kind of this complete overhaul of our front yard, including the retaining wall. Um, we paid them a lot of money to do it. Um, that, this was back in last summer. We got the um, letter, the violation letter about five, six months later. It was devastating. Um, we immediately contacted them. Upon contacting them, they immediately said that they bore no responsibility for this, that it was completely our responsibility for notifying them of any permits that they had to apply for, notifying them of historical requirements. Um, in the back and forth with them, they are not, they're not interested um, in taking any responsibility for this and have said that um, if they were going to come back and redo it, then we would have to pay them. Um, that's not a workable solution for us because it's just unfair. Um, so at this point, I mean, we would really appreciate the opportunity to keep it. We, there's native plants. We think, we think it improves the property. Um, we do think it's in line with other houses. As Mr. Bettis mentioned, there are other ones that have retaining walls. They were, of course, built pre-ordinance. Um, so we would hope that we can keep it. Um, and if not, at the very least, then we can, now that we've exhausted our administrative remedies, we can go after our landscaping companies if you guys were to deny it. But it's just a very frustrating use of our resources and time to go do that. Um, Yes, all, all I would add was that um, when it came to the choice of the materials, when it came to the choice of how our landscaping was being, um, you know, remade, um, we pretty much gave them more or less full control and said, hey, you know, whatever you think will make this look beautiful and in line with the other houses here. Um, and so they had brought up the idea of the retaining wall. They gave all of the uh, thoughts as far as the building materials for it. Um, and so we thought, you know, since again, we had seen their sign in other yards in our street and they had represented that they had done work. Um, we had been under the impression that um, they knew what they were doing and, and that this would all be in line. So um, I, I certainly echo that um, it would be a burden in terms of time and effort on our part to, um, to take them to court and try and get a remedy um, directly from them. And so we would appreciate the opportunity to keep this retaining wall. Um, you know, acknowledging that, of course, uh, obviously, if we had known um, the, the ordinances ourselves and had, you know, looked into that, that, uh, that, that is something that it seems very clear, but uh, that was obviously not something we had anticipated. Is there anything else you'd like to submit for the record? No, no I think that's it. Questions for the appellants, commissioners? 
Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody in the waiting room? Yeah. Oh, I do have one question for uh, Bob. Go ahead. Uh, do you know when the uh, the uh, historic district standards were, were put into place? And then how many of these exist from before those standards were in place? Sure, I believe it was the updated one was it's been from 2019. Was that? It's sixteen, so it's pretty new. I I went on Street View and looked. I looked at this up. Especially this one is close by to them. I wanted to make sure it's this one here to the left. This one's to the west of their property. And I looked online, that's, that was their 15. So it's it's a newer set of standards. So you're seeing the majority of the block. Uh, so I kind of I went out there today actually to get a few more context shots. I didn't feel comfortable conveying to you the appearance. Um, but there's a lot of these, a lot of low kind of curb level retaining walls on that side of the street. Um, but they all align at the, the sidewalk lines. They're a little bit different than than what we're seeing today, but they all predate the current um, ordinance. Thank you. Yes, sir. Questions? Okay. We have a motion. I do not. Mr. Robinson. Um, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> oh, yes, Mr. Dwyer. Mr. Dwyer, you are present. I am here. I, if I have the opportunity, I would like to testify. Oh, sorry, we didn't see you there, Jim. We apologize. We did not see you. We, popped in. we, we do apologize. Mr. Dwyer, please testify. Thank you. Is your testimony going to be the truth? Pardon me? Will your testimony be the truth? Yes, it will. Okay. Proceed. I'm sorry we overlooked. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I have composed a letter, as Bob suggested, and that should be in your file. I won't uh, take your time to by reading that letter into the record, but I will say that consistency of uh, application of the standards, adherence to the standards is very important. And for that reason, despite, I think, the good faith uh, role that the property owners have played in this, I think they were innocent of the, or not aware of the rules. And I think they were hoodwinked or taken advantage of in a way by their contractor. Despite that, I think it is important that the, the ground rules be adhered to consistently, that is fair and appropriate. And we have visited on that topic many times. With respect to the question about when the standards were adopted, they were adopted, I believe, initially in 1978, but they were revised in 2015. And that's when the emphasis on retention of historic slopes in the front yards of houses in the Central West End, uh, the emphasis on that matter was either initiated or reinforced at that point. So about nine years ago. Um, and this issue has arisen from time to time, both on this block and others in the vicinity. And the, the conclusion of the board, the preservation board each time has been to deny the appeal for good reason. I think Bob's point about the distinction <clears throat> between this wall, which is set back from the curb and others that are at the curb line or the, not the curb line, but the sidewalk line is an important one to recognize, number one. Number two, the height of the wall that is uh, also, although not specifically addressed in the standards, 
is somewhat relevant. There have been situations where erosion was demonstrated to be an issue. And in that case, or maybe more than one, uh, I believe on McPherson, it was agreed that a masonry element could be installed, but it would only be, uh, the, the height of it would be minimal. And that did not, uh, it was determined that that would not conflict with the purpose or the intent of the standards with regard to retaining the slopes. So that's a long way around to say, oh, and I guess one other relevant point is that some of the existing retaining walls of this sort that are found throughout the historic district predate the standards. And others, there are several that were installed in violation of the standards. The Preservation Board acted uh, by denying appeals in those situations. And at least in some cases, the property owners um, have chosen to ignore the denial of their appeal and those walls remain. But I do not think that that justifies um, an exception on an ongoing basis. And that is my testimony. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dwyer. By the way, your mirror is gorgeous over your shoulder. <laughs> That is a good looking mirror. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I have a question for Jim. <laughs> yes. Mr. Dwyer, are you, um, is, is your group doing anything to get the word out to new homeowners? Because this is the well, first time. Well, yes. We have, uh, we being the Central West End Association, produced a, um, a rather nice flyer or pamphlet that provides insight and illustrations into the uh, the standards and then provides links to the full document and links to the cultural resources office for guidance. And those have been circulated throughout the district. I believe that every structure or the owner of every structure in the district has at one time or another received a copy of that document. Um, however, ownership of property changes hands and there isn't or has not to date been an efficient means of identifying when that event occurs and therefore suggesting the opportunity to uh, advise the new owner of the ground rules. So um, I don't know, it's a fuzzy area, but yes, efforts have been made. Other questions, commissioners? Thank you very much, Mr. Dreyer. Yeah. You're yes, welcome. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Uh, message didn't went to a different account, so thank you. Commissioner Robinson? Yeah, I move that the um, preservation board uphold the director's denial as the proposed retaining the wall does not comply with the historic with the Central West End local historic district standards. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Um, no, I, I, I feel for the property owners, but it's pretty cut. Further discussion? Is that for the same? Yeah. Well, I, I would say, if I'm in their shoes, I'm wondering why did that guy or that lady in Hyde Park get away with uh, her garage and we're not getting away with this? And I would just say that you bought in a very active historic district and they are really wanting to, to maintain the standards over there. And I think I, and we all know Hyde Park has, has seen better days, and, but it's building, it's getting there. So, um, I just no. I, I just hope that if the vote doesn't go your way, not to lose. That you don't lose heart on this. They're just trying to make it all look uniform over there. I, mean, I, don't know. I wish I would have told us who that uh, company was so we could not use them. <laughs> just just uh -huh. to add one more thing, I think uh, I will be voting against this motion. I guess because I think. Uh, the, these folks did 
did everything right. They got in touch with CRO right away when they were reached out to. This isn't something that I would even think about. You know, if you think about historic districts, a lot of times you think windows, doors, administration, you know, the, the materials that you're using. I, I wouldn't uh, necessarily even think, especially if I was using a, a landscaper who had done work in the area and I was seeing things in my neighborhood that looked just like this, that planting a, a native garden with a small retaining wall would be something that would put me in uh, a, a financial hole because, you know, if we oppose this ostensibly, they're going to have to redo this. Um, so, so for that reason, I, 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 I defer to them on this one uh, since this is not something that... Uh, Really, the historic standards haven't been there for that long. We're talking about something that's nine years old. Um, so uh, with that, uh, I'll oppose this. Thank you. We did have an item in the McKinley Heights Historic District when I was on this board for a retaining wall that had been installed without a permit and was not compliant. And we, they came and said it was their contractor's fault. They didn't know the contractor should have gotten the permit, et cetera, et cetera. And we told them they had to fix it. So for consistency, I'm, I'm not sure that it would be fair for us to give an exception because they too thought their contractor was doing it. It sucks, definitely. I wish they did get you one. Yeah, and there's a, one issue, one one case in my ten years where I asked Bob a question at the very beginning where we allow vegetation to conceal an improper retaining wall because the pictures still kind of have that slope, but that's just not possible here or you know it seems to be a creative solution so it is certainly true that district by district the slope is considered more or less we, we took two meetings or maybe three to deal with mississippi plus where, where, where the historic element actually was the landscape okay the landmarks so, this required many cases. But this slope is seen as pretty important by the custodians of this historic district. So, slope is pretty important. We had a client right now that was actually thinking about changing. And also attest to uh, Mr. Dwyer's testimony because I live in the Central West End and I've received a pamphlet about um, the Central West End being a historic district and you know options. So I'm like, yeah, I I understand the, the alderman's point, but in the, the district I can tell you that those pamphlets do go out. One if, if if someone new has moved in but if someone has moved in more recently, then it being a newer district or new standards really doesn't apply because it's been around for nine years now. And so, yeah, you know, if it was a year or two and they moved in in that time frame, perhaps, but it's it's still a five-year standard. I think it's going to be only local district where an independent organization sending out illustrated guides to have to yeah. standards that would be clear. This is pretty exemplary. Yeah. Not that everyone gets that each house is turned over and gets sold. Sure. The mail does reach by phone. So the mail does. We, yeah. We don't have that in any other district that I'm aware. A good time to mention that under Meg, Meg and her staff have been going out to neighborhoods to talk about standards. Initiative that I hope continues when she moves to the land of windmills and bicycles. Other discussion? Hearing none. I'll call a roll. Commissioner Allen, do you vote yes or no? Yes. Commissioner Hamaker, do you vote yes or no? Yes. yes. Mr. Colleen, do you vote yes or no? Yes. Alderman Narayan, do you vote yes or no? No. Commissioner Robinson, do you vote yes or no? Yes. The chair abstains on this vote. There are four yeses, one no, one abstention, and the appeal is denied. Calling agenda item G. Okay. 
this is 2162 Allen Avenue. Um, the, and I'd like to be introduced into the ordinance uh, or into the record. The name of the ordinance 64689 is amended by 64925. And Kenley Heights Historic District Ordinance 67901. Uh, my agenda, PowerPoint, application, and presentation. And I'm Andrea Gagan, and I swear to tell the truth. Okay, this is 2162 Allen. Um, this is the location. As you can see, the, their rear yard backs up against the rear yards of the building. Uh, uh, next door on Missouri. Um, this is the proposed um, vinyl fence that they want to install in the rear of the property. Um, this is looking uh, south along the side of the building um, towards, as you can see, there's a uh, concrete retaining wall there. The fence would be on top of that, but right behind it, not on top of the wall, I don't think. Um, this would be the part that would be visible from the street. Um, although I will say that the historic district standards don't really make the distinction of whether it's visible, but it is visible at this location. Um, this is just a closer view of the retaining wall in the backyard. Um, this is just some context across Allen east on Allen and just back and forth. The historic district standards, um, it doesn't meet the historic district standards, um, which is why the cultural resources office denied the permit application um, the owner has appealed. Um, it doesn't comply uh, because it, it consists of vinyl fence panels. Um, Although it's not, vinyl is not listed as one of the prohibited materials, it does not meet the requirements of the, high, the rules for high fences. Sorry, say that again. Um, although mater the material under prohibited materials, vinyl is not one of the prohibited materials. However, it does not meet the uh, standards under number two uh, under high fences um, because it does not, uh, it's not really made of boards. It's it's their hollow pieces, basically, that are put into a panel. Um, any questions? So is the high part part of that retaining wall in the background? Mm -hmm. This this picture that you showed. Yeah. The fence going on top of that. Retaining wall? It's it, I think it's going to sit right behind it. But, behind. but so it's only the but, fence that's that tall. It's not. Concrete plus well, I mean, I get, I think the yard is that high, so it's like that. Their yard's higher, so it will be, it'll be at that height of the retaining wall, but it will be on top of it. It'll be slightly okay. behind it. You're, when you talk about the height, it's just the fence itself. Yeah. So your testimony is that it, it is under this ordinance a high fence. Yes. A uh, high fence has to be made of one of the following types by the ordinance. Boards placed vertically, wrought iron or cast iron, stone or brick pillars in combination with one of the above, or meets, this, meets a model example, Correct. and there's no model example. Correct. Okay. There any support or opposition? Um, I believe the owner has talked to McKinley Heights neighborhood, but I, we did not, we haven't received anything officially from them. Present. Yes. Come forward, please. I give you your Good afternoon. I'm Margaret Koch, and I own that building. I had it for years. I'm a lifelong resident here in the city, and I understand and one, appreciate. One, one, one more. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. The truth? Absolutely. Proceed. Okay. So I understand and I appreciate the goals of all the historic districts in the city. However, in this particular situation, I've got, I wanna show you exactly what we're dealing with. And um, so there's first picture is the picture of the house. And then uh, next to it, we do have a railing, a broad iron fence and gangway because of basic street. 
between the two houses. And there's pictures of my backyard and the carport. And then you'll see pictures. Okay. okay. So please feel free to look at all these pictures. This is my backyard, carport. And then this is what my tenants have to look at. This is what I'm trying to get rid of. This is what they see every day. This is the view that we're looking at. So when I have a tenant coming in, they are real thrilled with the apartment as we go in because it's all been done in the rehab until they get to the back porch. And then they see this. So it's a, it's a detriment and um, it makes it difficult. Also, I want to point out that um, the PowerPoint is incorrect. I'm not wanting a fence that goes all the way to the alley. I'm wanting a fence that goes on the west side, just from the house. And if you look at the picture of my backyard, there's these tall grasses. And then there's at the beginning of the car pad, there's all my rose bushes and whatnot. The fence is only going to go through there. It's going to cut in between the landscaping to the sidewalk. So the only thing that's going to be facing the alley is a gate because I have all those natural hedges there. So there'll be a fence on the east side from the beginning of the house to the beginning of the car pad. And on the west side, same thing, just to the beginning of the car pad. And I have all this other landscaping alongside the car pad. Did you submit a plan? Pardon? Did you submit yes. a plan? Yes, I did. Did we have the plan? Here, she's just saying it won't go this far. Did you get Andrea? Did you get to see her picture? Yeah. So, the line or one of the just go to this. Or the picture of my back. Because then you would only be able to look at your life. Okay. So, where the fence would go, you could just grab it. There's the beginning of the car. It'll go before you get all these grasses. It's going to go through there for the gate. And then this will help. It won't get that. So it's not going all the way, all the way down here. It's just going to shut off right here. Yeah, I don't think all the commissioners could see you. This is. Here's the gate. This is going to go from the house just to here. The only thing that I should have kept through all the little landscaping here because it's the same of all the big bushes and the grass. The only thing that I have is that fence. Because then I, I keep doing all this. There's going to be no fence there. This is going on the side, each side of the house. And this is a better picture of the fence. I'm not going to get this one little uh, gap on there. And um, also, the fence is fine. But, I'm not putting up a, an ugly white cheap plastic fence. I'm not putting up a black glossy fence or a tan or a gray fence. I'm putting up a fence that looks like wood grain. So that's a big difference. And the other big thing is it's gonna last. If I also have pictures of approved, um, fences in the past, I wonder where they went. And yeah, on the block of our, my block and the block next to it, there must be somewhere in here, there's pictures of fences that are approved. But after two and a half years, these fences, they all turn gray and they really don't look nice. I and mean, if you go through our neighborhood, it, it's not very appealing. They look great when you start. And after that, they all turn gray and they get. That's very attractive. So I thought, I mean, I used to live in Compton Heights and I thought when they had the historic district there, people had a lot of slate fences and they said, oh boy, we can't afford slate. And then they came up with this decision that, well, if it looks like slate, it's okay. So my concern is, I think that'll look like a nice wooden fence and it's gonna last a long time into the future. It's not gonna look like hell after a couple of years. So 
let's see. I also have letters from the neighbors. The neighbor next to me on the east side and the other neighbors that are facing across the alley. And they both think it's great that I would get this fence because they know what I'm dealing with with the 14 family row house. <laughs> so do you want me to read those? Or do you want to look at them or what? And the neighborhood association hasn't taken a position. Okay, and the picture, so we're keeping us. We're keeping everything. Um, so I'm seeking a variance because one, I don't believe it's facing the street. It appears to look like wood. I think it'll be an asset to the community. And the neighbors are happy and the association's not protesting. Oh, by the way, there is an ugly white plastic fence on Serbian Way in Allen. <laughs> so this is a, also a copy of the, uh, our sample of the fence. I just think it's fun and so very nice. Let see that. And like I said, it's gonna have, there was a picture of the fence. I'm keeping the flat cap because I want it to be as unobtrusive as possible. So what do you call that? <laughs> this is a sample of that. This is vinyl, but it's reinforced. It reinforces. Is that a board? Yeah. I'm asking for a variance so I can improve my property. Does anybody want this to have Sam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Let's see. The, the Sam. Oh, yes. Sam, can you ask questions yet? Yeah. You okay with us asking questions? Hold on one second. Sir, you don't want Oh, so I. Association? No, I went to the neighborhood association at a meet for the first time because I, I I never have any problems with my tenants. Everybody will say that my tenants have always been good over the years. I've had it for decades. And I believe when a, a landlord has a responsibility to the neighborhood and all my tenants have always been good tenants. Okay, so you went there. I, I just went for the first time to uh, and just observe the meeting. Oh, you didn't present this? No, I didn't. So no, you, I didn't know this was happening. But. So the neighborhood association isn't aware of this. So are you in a big rush? Because um, what we really love to have when when you want to get a variance like this is some kind of uh, weigh in from the actual neighborhood association. It's great to get those two letters. That helps, and maybe the alderman, because you know it, it doesn't seem like an outrageous idea. But you you've sat through this whole thing tonight. You can see all these neighborhood associations. They take the time as volunteers to write up all these rules. You know, we can't just go giving out variances left and right unless we kind of hear from them. And you know, and well, wouldn't okay. wouldn't weren't they notified of the meeting? Yes, but they usually don't. Well, it's usually incumbent upon the person who wants the variance to maybe approach them and, and kind of get with them and say, "What do y'all think? Can I get a letter of support?" Oh, I mean, you don't have to do that, but it's it's a good idea. And then another question I had. So I guess with with that first question. Are you willing to kind of wait a little bit and maybe get a little bit of support and come back to see us another time? Because I'd hate to vote you down tonight. Maybe you could, <laughs> well, I really would, but without more support, and you can see what we're doing in these other districts. It's, yeah. No, I've waited this long. I, yeah. I thought I'd be putting it up two months ago. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I hate to hit you with bureaucracy. And then is security an issue too? Is that why you want to have this fence as high as it is? Well, the tenants in that row house have been a real problem. Yeah. The kids. I mean, they throw a rock through my windows. They damage the front door. They hang on the retaining wall. You know, it's just, and he doesn't care. It wasn't it 48 inches? You wouldn't have to talk to us about this, but you're at, you're at six feet. So 
I thought I, it was because of the material. No, it's, it's because of it. there the, the height has nothing to do with it. Well, that's not so. No, no, it's no I read that wrong. So it is the material. It's just, it's just, well, it's just because it doesn't meet, it, it is a high fence, so it doesn't meet the, but it wouldn't meet the low fence standard either. Oh. Yeah, on the high fence standards, specify which materials are. Okay, that's all the question I think. We'll just add that. Um, there's some vagueness in this. Um, it sure looks like a board to me. And if this is a board, then it complies. Yeah. Like if it's vertical and a board, then it complies uh, because it doesn't rule out. It's not, a, it's not a prohibited material. It's not prohibited. If it's a vertical board, then it complies. If someone hit me with this, I sure said they hit me with a board. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm not. Uh, Commissioner Robinson, you're, you're sitting closer. You want to try that out? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have forgotten. Uh, I've lost track. Do we have a motion? I'm mean, sorry. Do you have anything else you want for the record? No, I do. It's just like to put up that nice fence. <laughs> fence now or fence someday? Oh, I would like it now, but I will go with someday. <laughs> Is there anybody in the waiting room? Do I hear a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we defer uh, um, judgment on this one until she has time to get support. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to second. I'll second. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so no, thank you for the second. I'm sure it was for discussion. I appreciate that. And I, I think that's a clever idea calling out a board and getting past all this. But I, I do mean that these people, I mean, obviously they they, they wanted wrought iron or cast iron stone on their clothes. So. You know, I know some of the folks who wrote this, I think out of respect for them, don't pull that trick and instead we give them a chance to look at this thing. You'll, you'll likely get it. But, I don't know why I will. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice step. <laughs> There's a motion on the board for me. Well, if you're introducing it, it's another sense of state. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, all right. I should... Well, now her her uh, case is if it continues on, yeah. can she withdraw her bring her exhibit back? I don't know. I think you has. I think it has. Would you would you show that to the commission? That doesn't that doesn't convince you. Yeah. Well, vote me down and come up with a new motion. Maybe you won't have to abstain. Maybe it won't have to. Okay, the motion on the floor is to defer. If it fails, we'll take another motion. If it passes, we'll hear this again at another time. Commissioner Allen, you vote yes or no? Yes. Commissioner Killeen, you vote yes or no? Yes. Alderman Narayan, you vote yes or no? No. Commissioner Robinson, you vote yes or no? No. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I sure about no. No. Oh, so. <laughs> so I hear another motion. Uh, I move that we overturn the director's denial as this uh, complies with the McKinley Heights local historic district standards because it is a vertical, uh, vertical boarded fence. Second. Discussion? Mike, you think this is too cute by half? Too cute what? You think this is too cute? It doesn't matter. It's majority rules. I don't think there's going to be a problem with this. Well, I would, I'd like to hear from like, the Mike's motion to hear from the Neighborhood Association. Although there are different definitions of the board, I would love to get theirs to try to this decision. We can go down and see where this lands. <laughs> Okay, I there is another motion on the floor that's been made and seconded. I'll call this one G2. Commissioner Allen, you vote yes or no? No. Commissioner Colleen, do you vote yes or no? Yes. Alderman Ryan, do you vote yes or no? Yes. 
Commissioner Robinson, you vote yes or no? No. Whether chair votes yes. So, oh, thank you. I wasn't sure what was going on. <laughs> thank you very much. And I know I appreciate a lot of people appreciate the time that people spend, citizens spend on the board. Director's report. Okay. All right, board members. Um, first of all, yes, we are continuing to do outreach and I am going to the revitalization or restoration of Baden meeting on Monday, July 8th, after many attempts to go to that meeting, finally getting to go. I'm still trying to reach the Realtors Association. They only have quarterly meetings of this specific committee and um, looks like that's not gonna happen until after my departure. So uh, I'm sure someone, on our capable staff will be able to go out there and do that because it's really important for us to reach the real estate agents. Um, Tiffany was instrumental in making that contact and we just want them to have the information to share with their clients because that's a great way to get people who are buying in historic districts like this couple who you know, was really hoodwinked by their uh, contractor to know what they're getting into. Um, and if you have any other suggestions for other neighborhood associations, we're not limiting ourselves to local historic districts. In fact, we're looking to go into preservation review districts because we want people there who, you know, who think well, down in historic districts, there's no restrictions, then they're surprised when they want to demolish a house and they find out that they can't just get a demolition permit. We really want to avoid those surprises. We want everyone to know going into any kind of purchase exactly what kind of rules apply. Um, anyway, any questions on that? Okay. Uh, second thing is we can finally go through with the RFP. We have a fully executed contract. Um, that took a little while. It was my first experience and I didn't quite know how long it would take, but I'm happy to share with you. The winning consultant is MKSK. They are based primarily in the Midwest and they've got offices in Columbus, Chicago, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Indianapolis, um, Louisville, but also Atlanta, Greenville, South Carolina, Orlando, and Washington, DC. I have copies of their successful submission if anybody would like to take a look. Um, Barb was on the selection committee, so she can, uh, or she was present at the meeting, sorry. Um, what impressed us, I think, was the level of, they just really got into the meat of the RFP. They really understood it. Um, that was communicated very well in their exhaustive <laughs> proposal, which uh, for both Barb and myself being, um, uh, ordinance walks, they actually touched on the ordinance in their response. So they didn't just respond to the general principles, they really dived into the need of what was being requested and responded in a way that gave me and I think other members of the committee the confidence that they had not just the capacity to carry out this project, but the genuine interest and like the fascination with, with tinkering with all this stuff. And I think we just had a great example of the benefits of you know creating a standard list of definitions. What is a board? <laughs> Um, what, what did they really mean when they wrote that in their ordinance? Because I have a feeling they meant wooden boards, but that's not what they wrote. And so there's that ambiguity, which makes us send something to the preservation board and, and makes your choices also difficult because there is a clarity. Pardon? Say preservation board. I said preservation, oh, funny. yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> so I just think there, there are so many examples. Y'all, you see a few of them. We see them every day where we make either judgment calls or we are we have to do research projects basically on a simple application because of the lack of clarity in a given district standard. So it's our hope that um, with the template that will be the result of this project, that as neighborhoods either become historic districts or revisit their standards as Central West End did nine years ago, that they will be picking from a menu and that even if they don't want to change the impact of their standards, the language will be clear. There won't be any board, you know, there will be a wooden board or materials will be specified and not just what's allowed, but also what's prohibited because that's another common problem we find is that there's a list of allowable materials, but there's no prohibited materials. So does that mean that if it's allowed, if it's not on the allowed list, it's prohibited automatically or these are questions, we're not lawyers and we call Bob Barb often enough. And we would like to know by, we would like everyone, lay people, developers, neighbors, neighborhood associations, applicants to be able to read the ordinances and know what they can and can't do. That should be, that's good for preservation because it's clear and it's fair and it's equitable. And we're also hoping of course, to incorporate some 
best practices in terms of the ADA, um, energy efficiency, um, new, uh, new building standards, new building materials and, and techniques. So um, that is something that, as you know, I will not necessarily be around for, although I will be available for phone calls and emails within a limited amount of time every day, given the time difference, but it is my last board meeting and, oh God, I didn't think I was gonna get showed up. Um, it has really been an honor and a pleasure to work with all of you. Um, I am, for the first year and a half, I didn't get to meet most of you in person because of COVID. It was all via the internet and it was very strange the first time I met Anthony, I remember. Um, but these meetings and your volunteerism and your dedication and the thought that you give to what to the outside world might seem like very mundane and academic questions, but really, you know, I think as you saw tonight, really have an impact on people, on property, on the character of neighborhoods, and uh, people care about what their neighborhoods look like. That's why they put so much effort into creating these standards, revising these standards, coming to these meetings, you know, supporting what supporting the rules because that's why they exist. Um, and you see the results too. You see in neighborhoods that have historic districts. You see a higher quality of materials, a higher quality of renovation of new construction, and um, that you know pays benefits not just financially but in all sorts of ways to St. Louis. And um, I will miss this job. I will miss you. I will miss these meetings. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I really will. <laughs> and I may tune in from time to time. And I will also, as my predecessor Dan has been available to me whenever I have needed him, I will be available to my successor and to staff and to board members in any way that I can. Um, I really. So this has been very good to me, and I thank you. Anything else? Very much to adjourn. So moved. Second. Objection. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>